everybody, it's Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. Welcome back to the series. If you didn't see last week's video, we covered all about our choice between lithium batteries or flooded wet cell batteries. We received a lot of interesting comments about our choice for uh, flooded wet cell batteries and a couple of really good suggestions to consider AGM. So we'll be taking a look at that, but if you have any other suggestions, we'd love to hear any comments on that video. If you didn't see it, I will put a link um, right up in this particular corner, so you can go ahead and check it out if you're watching on a mobile device, or it'll be in the links down below if you're watching on a PC. This week we're gonna talk about manual bilge pumps. As you know, we're getting ready to plan our trip and sail back with the boat from uh, New Orleans to the west coast of Florida. And we have a manual bilge pump on the boat. And to be perfectly candid, I don't know if the thing works. We haven't really done anything with it. Um, we have three different electric bilge pumps as backups uh, you know, to our, our standard bilge pump system. However, this is definitely something worth having. And I found this at a little local um, boat swap meet. It's kind of interesting. Somebody mounted it to a big old uh, two by three by six or something, two by six here, um, as a way to make this very portable. I think that's a great solution. So I'm just gonna test this thing out. I honestly don't know if it works. I paid 20 bucks for this thing. Um, at the end of the day, if it doesn't work, the aluminum housing alone is well worth that. These things are a couple of hundred bucks normally, and a rebu rebuild kit's about a hundred. So uh, with a rebuild kit, if I have to put one in there, that's all it is. What's interesting is I actually think it does work. When I, um, if I put my hand along this and pump, I can, I can feel the suction. So I do think it's, it's likely working. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and connect up a hose to this and just test it out. I uh, want to see what kind of lift it gets, how much we can really pump with it. I think I'm going to bring one of those like Rubbermaid tubs. It's like an 18 gallon tub and then set a timer and just pump for a minute and see does it truly get the 17 or 18 gallons a minute that the specifications call for and how much does head height change the volume of the particular pumping. So it'll be a fun little experiment with this. Uh, this one here is the Whale Gusher 10. It happens to have an aluminum body. Um, what's nice about these units is they're relatively inexpensive compared to a bronze cast one, like Edson has beautiful bronze ones that, uh, that have a really, really high pump capacity. But if you go online and you look for one of those new, you know, this style, but manual and larger and bronze, they're like seven to nine hundred dollars. They are not uh, inexpensive at all. This one looks like it's in pretty good shape. The bellows doesn't appear to be dry or cracked or brittle. Uh, don't really know what the reed valves look like inside that open and close to control the water flow one direction here. So let's um, let's get this connected. I have uh, some inch and a half um, white. I just got pool hose, very similar to what you would see with boat sanitation hose, but I just bought it at Home Depot for this test at $3 a foot instead of the seven or $8 a foot you pay for good sanitation hose. Uh, got a couple of stainless steel clamps. And then on the outside of this, uh, the discharge side, I just went ahead and bought um, a flat um, discharge hose. This is what you would see with like a gas powered pump for a construction site, uh, just a place to direct the water. I did that because it was inexpensive. It was like six bucks and I just don't want this water to go all over next to the edge of the, um, the pool where I pump it or, or even the edge of the canal. So this will at least let me control where the water goes. Don't really care that it's not really the right size. I'll use a hose clamp to hold it on the discharge side. So with that, let's, um, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is figure out which side is the suction side. So I'm going to put my hand right here and I can feel the air going out on that side. Yep, and I feel the suction on this. So in and out. So we're gonna go ahead and connect up the input right to this. All right, I have my standard pool hose here. I'm gonna put my hose clamp over the top of this and uh, I don't like using a screwdriver in this. I usually use a nut driver. But we're just gonna go ahead and get this cranked down so it's close to the right size. Let's go ahead and get this slid on. This is, it actually feels a little bit loose on here. That's a little concerning, but I think it's going to be okay for our little test here. And what's interesting about these is this is not a barbed connection like you would see typically on a lot of other marine connections, which is going to be handy, I think, for removing this back off of here. So I was able to get that cranked on there tight for the most part. Um, I think good enough for this. Like I said, this is not my permanent um, solution. And if I were mounting this in the boat permanently, 
I would heat the end of this up with a heat gun and then I would tighten it up a little bit. It would just give you, make it a little bit more pliable. It's gonna be interesting to see how much water does or doesn't leak out of that. All right, so I'm now gonna work on putting the discharge side on it. And what's interesting is this, uh, this little flat rubber hose, you have to kind of put my finger in there and push it. It's gonna be interesting to see if the water will just fill this up very easily or if we'll have to, um, <laughs> if, if it maybe doesn't work, I don't know, we'll see. So I'm just gonna slide this on the outside here, the out output side. All right, got that tightened up, and now it's just a matter of taking it out, and let's go see how well this works. The nice thing about this is you can step on one side, put your handle right into the opening here, and just go ahead and pump it out. And I already see this side is blowing that up as it goes, so I think it, it likely will push the water through without an issue. Let's go ahead and uh, take this out back and see how well she works. definitely feels like we got to tighten up the connections. So I cut a small piece of the exhaust hose, that blue stuff, and I put it right over the aluminum uh, part of the intake side, just an inch long piece, and then I put the rubber hose over it. It felt like a nice way to give it a little bit of a tighter fit and put rubber against rubber. It just felt like it might be a little, um, a little better and I wouldn't risk any air possibly getting in there. I also tightened up the outer bellows, which was a little bit loose on the outer housing. So let's go ahead and pump this and give it a shot now. All right, we're gonna test it out. Yep, go ahead and tell me when. So as you saw, it works, and the good news is it works exactly as I bought it. So for 20 bucks, I got a $250 or so um, spare bilge pump. I did have to tighten up this, um, this clamp around this bellows, but everything worked really good. The flexible discharge hoses are not a good idea. Um, as you saw in that video, the water, it, it, it sort of kinks a little bit, and then the water would pressurize up, it would pop the hose up in the air. So you saw it putting some in the, in the bin and some up higher. So let me give you an idea what that was. We timed ourselves at exactly one minute. Deb held the, um, the stopwatch. I pumped it for one minute. That, uh, that Sterlite tub that we had, that big Rubbermaid tub, held 14 gallons. So it was a 56 quart um, tub. So if that was 14 gallons, you saw we filled it all the way up to the top, plus you saw the water going over the, over the sides. Um, I suspect we probably had, let's say, 16 to 18 gallons in there, so cer certainly sounds like it's right at the amount that, that are in the specifications for this. Now here's the reality. Ever hear that old saying that there's no better bilge pump than a scared sailor with a bucket? Um, if the boat was leaking at a volume where you had to pump, like I was just pumping for one minute, things would be really bad. Um, I'm not in great shape, but frankly, that was tiring for just one minute. Can you imagine if you had a leak that was large and you had to really bail this down um, while you're trying to get to a, a location or while you're trying to do a repair, I don't know that it would be possible to do it that quick. Um, it makes you really think that one of the things you might need to do is concentrate quickly on finding the hole before you concentrate on removing the water. Because depending on the size of a leak or hole you have, you may not be able manually to overcome the inflow. Yeah, all in all though, this is a great deal. And I love the fact that we now have an extra one of these. Um, couldn't be happier with that find. I do think I'm gonna start looking for one of those really big Edson used ones. Uh, I'd love to have a bronze one. I mentioned before, we have one of these built into Dream Chaser. I'm sure the bellows are shot and it probably needs to be rebuilt. I'm doing this 100% from memory, but I feel like the, the unit is almost twice this size. 
And if it's twice the size, I'm guessing it's somewhere near twice the capacity. It is interesting, you can really feel the pressure as you pull this thing out and it sucks the water into the bellows. And then when you go to compress it, it doesn't just go in as easy as it does here. You really are, you're pushing that water out um, and you're doing it through the size of this particular opening. I can feel the little, the little um, reed or flap in there that opens, you know, this side when you, when you go on the intake stroke, the reed opens and allows water to flow in. When you push on this one, this reed opens outward and that means this one cannot open and it blows the water back out. So it's a fairly continual flow. All in all, thrilled with this particular purchase. Um, I would certainly encourage anyone that has a boat to have one of these as a secondary, uh, a secondary backup, if you will. Especially if you can find one used, like people get rid of boats all the time, you might be able to find some of these laying around. And even if you had to do a rebuild kit on one, not terribly expensive, 100 bucks for a rebuild kit or so, and you've got a really good uh, additional manual backup. And I like the fact that this one's nice and portable. But before I end this video, I am going to do a little chore around the house. Um, when we first moved into this house, Deb and I upgraded most of the lighting to smart lighting. So all the can lights, for example, and several of the lamps and the outdoor patio lights are all voice activated, um, automation control. You can, you can set timers on them. You can do it all through it, uh, whatever you want to do. Alexa, stop. I said her name. That was bad. So the other day in the girl's bathroom, in that small little combination exhaust fan and uh, light, the light bulb went out in it. And I didn't have any regular bulbs in the house. I only had smart bulbs. So I put a smart bulb in it. Uh, but it's, it's, I didn't connect it up to the automation. I didn't intend to leave it in there. So every time the girls go in at night, they turn it on, that light will blink three times, indicating that it's not connected to a hub or to any unit. Uh, so it drives them a little bit crazy. They get up in the middle of the night, it's nerve wracking for them. So I am gonna go in there and put up the, uh, replace that light with a dumb light. I finally bought regular LED bulbs and it's already hot. So I think after that, that's a good excuse to hop in the pool. what that was refreshing so getting us a chance to do a little dip in the pool cool off is really really nice I think we're gonna end this video and Deb and I will probably sit down on the couch and watch a couple more um, blacklist videos we've been watching the, the binge watching thing from season two we're up to season five I think it goes through season six on Netflix and they just signed for season eight so we have a lot to catch up on and we've been enjoying the heck out of that particular series so Chances are I'll spend a couple hours vegging out on the couch with a glass of iced tea. <laughs> Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you all next Friday. And if you didn't see that video from last week, I think I mentioned there's a link down in the description below. And right at the end of this video, we'll see a couple of other options for other videos that you might find interesting. Love to hear your comments and thoughts down below on manual bilge pump solutions for your boat. Thanks everybody. Safe sailing and a following sea.